through this very violent intervention. The plant is much more pest prone. In India, there's a 300 to 400% increase in non-target pests. These are pests that were not a pest in that crop. They're new pests that have been created. And there's a 13-fold increase in pesticide in the areas where Bt cotton has been introduced. There was, of course, a fourth claim that because this would control pests, this would control weeds, the farm, and it would increase yields, farmers would have increased benefits. The reality is farmers have run into huge losses. The areas where Bt cotton is being cultivated in India are areas where farmers have got into deep debt, an average of 6,400 rupees of losses annually. And the debt has led farmers to commit suicide. 200,000 farmers have committed suicide. 80% of them are those who bought GMO seed. So we are talking of every promise being false. But the reason it doesn't appear is first, the studies are all sponsored by the companies. The data they use is false. To date, the average yields of BT cotton in India are 400 kilograms an acre. To date, Monsanto continues to advertise and scientists that they bribe to write papers use a figure of 1,500 kilograms. But some, some countries like South Africa are planting maize mainly. And last year, there was a report of a heavy, heavy, heavy loss of, for, for the farmers. And it was difficult to get um, a data because the farmers had signed a contract not to, not to divulge any kind of information to anybody. So it was very, very difficult. And um, you know, sweet potato is one of the staple foods in Africa. And uh, there was somebody, a Kenyan, uh, who was working with uh, a Kenyan research institute called Kari, and her name is Florence Wambuku, and she had tried, um, she had tried uh, a gem, uh, a gem potato, sweet potato, and it has failed. So most of the research has failed, and also, and also some some countries like uh, Burkina Faso, and there who have, who have, who have tried a uh, bitty cotton, they have also failed. So. In most of the cases, it is failure, and because of this, because of other reasons, Africa have to now has closed its door to GM. But as, as I will talk later, it, this is changing, and changing very fast, and changing because of climate change. Thank you. Yeah, we want to get to that too. This current state of affairs. Um, just commenting on the past, um, uh, some of the false promises that we've have made themselves known to us now. Right, I want to say um, a couple things about especially using the, the word and term technology when we're talking about the various methods and techniques employed in genetic modification. Uh, technology to me and I think to most people means uh, reliable, reproducible and predictable uh, methods of, of making something. For example, a car, a refrigerator, an atomic bomb, these are all technologies. But as, as Dr. Shiva pointed out, the, the methods which plants and life is transformed and genetically modified are extremely unreliable and unpredictable. For example, when you infect a certain plant um, with cancer or use a gene gun, you actually do this thousands of times because most of them do not give um, the kind of, don't give viable, viable plants. So I think that we need to be really careful when we use the term technology for the particular techniques. And this, of course, has something to do with the fact that they have not been able to deliver on, on their biological promises. And I think one more, thing is really, one more thing is really important when we're talking about why GM crops have failed. And I think that a big reason why GM crops have failed is because of the power of social movements who have constantly illustrated the dangers and risks posed by these crops. All the way from India to the United Kingdom to the US and Europe and Africa, social <laughs> movements have put the pressure on biotechnology companies and corporations and various multi-state institutions like the European Union to really reject these techno so-called technologies. And I think this is especially important for us to understand when we're here in Copenhagen trying to come to an understanding of what's going on with the climate, uh, the various proposals on the table, that a solution 
to this issue is not going to come from inside of the Bell Center, but it's going to come from all of us outside demonstrating. And I think this has been effectively shown during the struggle against GMOs. Yeah, and of course, like I said, we, we are highlighting that issue because we want people to be more aware about this and to really um, take this up as a kind of campaign issue, if you will, in the climate um, agenda. Uh, the other part of the false promises uh, that I think would be interesting for us to talk about are some of the safety issues associated with GM, because even in the, this next round and second generation type GMs, that's not been addressed. We have both health issues, human and um, animal, as well as environmental issues. So if you um, have comments on that as well, I think that would provide us some further good insight. Um, you know, in 1992, two treaties uh, were signed at the Earth Summit in Rio. One was the Treaty on Climate Change, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, and the other was the Convention on Biological Diversity. While framing the Convention on Biological Diversity, we worked a lot to educate the negotiators that there was a new threat to biodiversity, and that was genetic engineering. That genetically engineered crops would contaminate biodiversity and lose the integrity of biodiversity, for example, of maize in Mexico. So we put in an Article 19.3 into the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is the one that addresses risks. And I, I was very much part of the protest, that pro, uh, process, was part of the first expert group that set up the framework on how this could be drawn into a protocol. And with a lot of back and forth, eventually, a biosafety protocol was signed, and it's called the Cartagena Protocol because it was signed in Cartagena. So we actually have an international law on the risks of genetic engineering. Governments would not have signed this law if there were no risks. What is the experience in these 20 years on the aspect of risks to human health, animal health? And at this point, the only way human health is measured is through animal experiments, because we are not really monitoring what this is doing to human beings, and also to the health of ecosystems. As I mentioned, in terms of the health of ecosystem, BT, the, the BT crops are releasing toxin all the time. We have studied what this has done in the soils where BT cotton is grown. And compared to soils where non-BT is grown, we're finding in four years of planting, 25% disappearance of beneficial microorganisms. Organisms that degrade the biomass and turn it into soil and turn it into humans. 22% um, disappearance of, all, of organisms, enzymes that mobilize the phosphates in the soil, otherwise the plant can't take it up, or fix the nitrogen. So basically the whole ecosystem of the soil is being destroyed. Our studies are also showing that soil organisms are being killed by the application of herbicides like Roundup. So both the Bt application and the herbicide resistant application are a threat to the soil's ecosystem. They're a threat to pollinators. The very famous study done in Cornell on the monarch butterfly, which showed that larvae fed with Bt pollen died. Larvae fed with Norman pollen were fine. Um, the same enzymes and the same bacteria that digest biomass in the soil also work in the guts of animals. For example, cows, which take in a lot of biomass and then in their four stomachs there's a lot of digestion there going on. In the state of Andhra Pradesh in India, suddenly 1,800 cattle died grazing in BT cotton fields. And according to the local state government, the veterinary department, this was because of the toxin. When this issue was brought to the, to the center, of course the center which is always more controlled and accessed by the biotechnology industry, they started to say it's some other cause.